Hi everyone, it's Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm a reseller. I've been reselling for 19 years and I absolutely love it. And today I have a Goodwill bins haul for you. I'm completing my hauls from when I went to Galveston, Texas. Day one was the Amazon bin store. Day two was the regular Goodwill store in Galveston, Texas. And day three, I drove to Houston, Texas to go to the Goodwill Outlet Center, which often is called the Goodwill Bins because all of the clothing and items are in big giant bins and you pay by the pound. At the Houston Goodwill Bins that I went to, if you purchased zero to 50 pounds of clothing, it was $2.49 a pound. Over 50 pounds of clothing was $1.99 a pound and it was so nice there. There were plenty of carts and you just put your items in the cart instead of having to carry big bags. You wheel your cart onto the scale to find out the weight of the items. Well, I had so much stuff. I knew it had to be over 50 pounds. I get up there and she said, it's 49 pounds. So, so she said, if you wanna go back and add a couple things to make it over 50 pounds, it will be a lot less expensive. So I thought that was so nice of her. So I went back, added a few more items. I ended up with 52 pounds of clothing. She told me to take out the purse. I ended up with a purse, two hats, and a baby toy. So she took those out and, she, and those were only $1.19 a pound. So I ended up getting 67 items for a total of $112.07. I was there for four hours and one minute. If I took an average cost of goods, it would have been $1.67 an item, but I like finding out how much each individual item costs. So when I'm listing the items, I weigh them to find out the exact cost of each item. So let's go back and take a look inside the Goodwill bins. Then we'll come back here. I have a little wet sold portion because I've already sold some of the items. Then I'll show you all of the other items and how much I think I will make profit on this haul according to recent sold comps. So. day spent at the Goodwill bins is a great day as far as I am concerned. I love the treasure hunt, the excitement of it. Whenever I'm walking in, my heart is beating so strongly in my chest. It is the same feeling as if I was about to start running a race. I just love it. My goal that day was to find at least 50 pounds of clothing, shoes, and accessories so that it would be just $1.99 a pound. Anxiety creeps up on me Is this how it's supposed to feel? Tell me when it's over I got some place that I gotta be It won't leave My friends, hey Get out of your comfort zone It's a blessing in disguise Get out of what you call home Your name is written in the sky Don't let the bins intimidate you. I often stay at the very back. I don't get in the mix with all the people and the crowds where the new bins are coming out. I've tried that before and I usually find one or two really great items, but if I just stick to a bin off to the side and dig from top to bottom, I will find just as many good items in that same amount of time. So my preference is to find a nice quiet area off on my own and sort through every item in that bin. And usually the very bottom of the bin is where I find great items because sometimes nobody has actually dug to the bottom of the bin.
I think that the bins is a great learning opportunity. I have picked up so many things at the bins because it is a low cost of goods and I just wanted to try it that I might not have picked up at a regular Goodwill store and paid the higher prices. And even if the item doesn't sell for a great amount, I remember that item later and I'm able to source faster because I've already had the experience with that particular brand and I know that it sold well or it didn't sell well. So some of the items are going to sell great and make great money and other items you will have more experience and knowledge for the next time that you source. I've started listing these items and my daughter Morgan is listing some of them in her Poshmark closet also. And some of them have already started selling and I already shipped them out. So I'm going to share with you what has already sold for me or for Morgan. The first one I titled Lauren Ralph Lauren dress plus size 20 W black gray floral print. It sold on eBay for a gross amount of $33.80. I received back in the bank after postage and fees $17.90. My cost of goods was just $2.30. It took just six days to sell and my profit was $15.60. The second one also sold on eBay. This was a Karen Scott denim jumper dress, women's large blue sleeveless. It didn't sell for a lot. It sold for a gross amount of $16.89. I received an offer for $10 plus shipping and I decided to go ahead and just take it. I received back $7.09. My cost of goods was $1.90. My profit was just $5.19. Had I held out a little longer, I know I could have profited more. I had just gotten back from Europe and had very little activity on eBay. So I was just accepting anything to try to get the ball moving. On Poshmark, this sweater was hilarious. I noticed it was a Christmas sweater and I thought, oh, this is perfect timing. I got several Christmas items and I picked it up. I got home and I was taking a picture of it and I realized it was a naughty Santa sweater. I sent a picture to my husband. He was at work. I was like, do you think this is okay to list? And I decided, yes, it was fine. Just silly and funny. And it ended up selling great. It sold on Poshmark outright, not even an offer in just two days. I titled it Naughty Ugly Christmas Sweater, Men's Size Extra Extra Large, Dirty Santa, One Night Only Lights. And then I also took a video clip where I moved the sweater so that you could see that the lights did work. It sold for a gross amount of $32. My earnings were $25.60. My cost of goods was just $2.25. It took just two days to sell and my profit was $23.35. I thought that was perfect. If I could have every item sell in just two days for a $23 profit, I would be so happy. The next one Morgan sold on Poshmark. It was an original penguin track jacket. And the day before when I was at the regular Goodwill store, I found several sweaters by the same brand, but I skipped on them. When I saw this one, it was a full zip jacket. It had stripes. I looked at the comps. They looked good and the cost is a lot lower at the Goodwill bins. That really changes what I pick up since it's such a low cost of goods. It sold for a gross amount of $20. My earnings were $13.02. My cost of goods was just $1.82. It took 15 days to sell and Morgan made a profit of $11.20. She's still doing the listings. I still keep all of the items at my house and ship them out for her, but she said she's ready to ship. So I just need to take the things to her and help her get her her shipping station set up and then she'll be shipping pretty soon. The next item was an item that I picked up when the lady said that I only had 49 pounds, go get a couple other things. This was one of the items that I grabbed and it sold quickly. Actually, Morgan sold it on Poshmark. It was titled Nike Joggers Pants Men's Extra Large Gray Sweatpants Knit 
tapered pocket drawstring. It sold for just a gross amount of $13. Morgan's earnings were $7.07. The cost of goods was just $2.03 and the profit was just $5.04. So not a lot. It took 16 days to sell, but it made a big difference adding that item in to get the cost of goods $1.99 a pound versus $2.49 a pound. The next one was another Christmas themed item and Morgan sold it in her Poshmark closet. It was the North Pole Reindeer Plush PJs 4T Boys or Girls One Piece Hooded. It sold outright, not even an offer, for $15. Morgan's earnings were $12. The cost of goods was $1.30, and Morgan's profit was $10.70. And it sold the same day that she listed it. So far, between me and Morgan, we have received back $82.68. I also had some Garfield pillowcases that were from 1978. They were so cute. According to sold comps, I think they would have sold around $28. So I probably would have listed them around $32 to $35 but I ended up giving them away to my son, Jason's girlfriend, but they were so cute and I think they would have been really good sellers. Now I'm going to show you all of the other items. Some of them are listed, some of them we are working on listing. The first item, I found this really nice fleece full zip jacket and it is Mercedes Benz lady size medium and I think it's a really dark navy blue if I put it next to this black shirt that's normally what I have to do because it looked black to me but when I put it next to my black shirt I can tell that it's navy blue it has the logo on the chest and a lot of times things branded like this Mercedes or BMW or Jaguar or things like that will sell very well I listed it for $29. Now on these, I normally list about 20% higher than I think they will actually sell for. That way there is room for offers and negotiations. Some of them will sell full price. Some of them will sell a little under 20%, but on average, I usually sell for about 20% lower than I'm listing them. I'm going to list them all on eBay, Poshmark, and I'm going to start listing on Macari again. I was listing on five different platforms and it really helped to increase my sales, but it just got to be too much delisting everything and then the panic of what if something sells on one platform and I don't end it on the other one. And that happened recently. I had a pair of boots that sold on both platforms and I hate that. So I've really been cutting back on the cross listing. I started using a new cross-listing service, which is Vendu, because there are two main things that made a big difference to me. Number one, if I have the items loaded into their platform, if it sells, say, on Poshmark, it will automatically delist it on eBay for me. So I no longer have to worry about that. I'm so excited about that. And the second thing that really mattered to me was I can cross-list from my phone. Over the last year, I have been on the road more than I have been at home. And often before I leave, I'll hurry and take some, some pictures that I can list while on the road. But I neglected cross-listing a lot of things. Now I can use Vindu and I can cross-list on the road too. So I'm super excited about that. It's been so easy to use so far. It's been extremely user-friendly. So I'm really excited about it and I'll keep you updated on it. If you're interested in trying out Vindu, I will put a link in the description box below so that you can try out Vindu also and I will keep you posted on how it's going and I'm really excited about it and love it so much already. The next two items Morgan listed in her Poshmark closet and the first one is a it's already getting wrinkled. I didn't prepackage these since I was doing the haul and this is why I prepackage because things get messed up if you don't prepackage them and they get wrinkled. This is Pendleton it's 100% wool. I noticed it has the paper tag, made in the USA. Morgan listed it for $36. Then along the same lines, another vintage skirt, and this one is this blue and green plaid. The brand is Eagle's Eye, and it is also made in the USA, size 10, and it's actually a full wrap skirt. And this one Morgan listed for $25.
I love finding these type of skirts. In Morgan's closet, I was looking, she has like 506 listings now between the sold and the listed items, like 506 items ever listed. Had a vintage skirt kind of along these same lines. And of all of the items, I think it ranks number two when I sort the likes from highest to lowest. So these type of items are pretty popular. I think the one she just sold took five and a half months. So sometimes they're not just that super fast flip, but they're a really solid flip. Then the next item was perfect for this type of time of year. I love picking up these type of vests. They're so cute and they usually sell well. The brand is K-I-K-I-T. It's a size medium. I wasn't familiar with the brand, but I picked these up just on style. And this one Morgan has listed for $25 then this one i'm going to keep and then i'll probably sell it for next season i thought it was just adorable i'm not even sure what this brand is i noticed on the interior tag it said target so this would be just fun to wear at christmas time so i will wear it and then after i wear it i'll probably list it for like 18 dollars. then this one i did go ahead and pre-package because I steamed it, it was really nice. I knew if I just threw it in a stack, it would end up messed up. But if I folded it, it would come out nice. This is an Ariat blouse and here is the tag. It is a great size, size extra, extra large. It is called the Kirby shirt and I have it listed for $22. And I am going to set this over to the side so it does not get completely wrinkled. I love picking up military items. They normally sell well, and there can be a big range. What I do when I pick up a military item, I just look at the tag. I put in the information on the tag, do some searching, look up sole comps because they can really vary. This one is a nice solid coat. It's thick and it's heavy, but the sole comps aren't super high. Morgan has this one listed for $25. So it'll probably sell for 20. It's heavy. I bet it costs three or $4. Not a super high profit, but it'll still probably profit 10 or $15, which I think is great on Ben's items. Then two pairs of pants and the same thing. I looked at the tag and I found out one of them has like insect repellent, insect guard, and the comps on it were a little bit better. The one that said insect guard, Morgan listed for $22. The one that does not say insect guard, she listed for $18. And the items that Morgan's selling, I still look up the sold comps and I help her with wording and look at her listings. And it's really fun to get to do that. These next four items were just $1.19 a pound. She had me pull them out. I had them intermingled with everything else. And she told me, no, these are less. So I thought that was really nice of her. This is the brand and this sack and it is leather. I found on the tag that it said leather and it's woven and just a really nice, pretty purse. And Morgan has this listed in her closet for $27. It's a really nice one. I was kind of tempted to keep it. Then I got this adorable little pottery barn stacking toy. It's called Fun on the Farm. And whenever I find anything pottery barn, I look it up because it can often sell for a really good amount. I looked up the comps on this and they were great. I thought, oh, this is going to sell for like $25, $28. It's not going to cost much. It's going to be super easy. And then I found out once I got home that there is another piece that goes on top that is missing, but I think it'll still sell for $12 or $15. I got this Life is Good hat. I love picking up Life is Good. The t-shirts usually sell well, but I don't think I'd ever picked up a baseball hat. So I thought it would probably do great. It's very lightweight. I got home and there were quite a few listed. So I priced it pretty low, just $10 so that it will actually sell. So had I looked up sold comps, I probably would not have picked it up or actually I might have and kept it myself and I still might keep it myself. Then this one I thought was really pretty. I thought on the tag when I read it that it said Angora, but it actually says Angola, which is a different fabric. That is okay. And this is the brand. And I saw from looking at other listings that it appears to be vintage. Next, I got a couple altered state 
dresses and my girls used to really like shopping at Altered State and I always thought they were a little bit pricey. Like normally a dress I think would be like around 70 or $80, but I found that they have not been great at reselling. So I normally don't pick them up at the regular Goodwill, but if I find one that's really cute and I get it at the bins and it's just a dollar or two, I can price it lower where it will actually sell. So this one is this chambray type material which I found usually sells really well and it laces up the front and it is a size medium so I think it will sell well. I found the stock photos and I thought they were really cute. So I have this one listed for $25. Then this is the other altered state dress and this one is just beautiful. It has this lace and all this embroidery and here is the tag. It is also size medium. And I have this one listed for $28. Then I wanted to pick up some sweaters because I thought we are definitely in sweater season. And this one is just Old Navy, but it had a few things that made me pick it up. It is a size extra, extra large, excellent condition, and just the style. It is this thick, cable knit and if it's a nice old navy item it still sells not for a lot i have has this listed for 17 dollars another sweater that won't sell for a lot of money but hopefully it will sell this season it is loft size medium and it says on their loft outlet lounge a nice cute soft sweater and morgan has that one listed for just 13 dollars Next, I found a few new tax items. This is Anne Klein and it is a size 1X. I love selling plus sizes and it had a retail value of $74. And I've sold a lot of Anne Klein and it usually doesn't sell anywhere near the retail value. Had it not been a plus size, I would not have picked it up, but I thought it was really cute. New with tags, 1X and I have it listed for $24. The next one, I have found that jeans that are this style, the button up, and it has an extreme flare leg. I have found that those have sold really well lately. It was brand new with tags. I still have the tags here, but there was a little spot on it. So I removed the tags and I used a little bit of OxyClean. The stain came right out. So on the listing, I just say that. I say that it was new with tags, but there was a spot. I washed it. I'll save the tags and normally I just stick them in the pocket. Just let them know in the listing that it has not been warm, but it has been washed. And then usually I priced it a little bit lower. I have these priced at $39. Then I love this dress. This is so cute. I tried it on already and I'm keeping it and I will wear it one time to some event in the spring and then I'll sell it. It is ASOS size extra small is brand new with tags. I'll have to pop the stock photos in because it is so cute on with that ruffle and then it has a low back. If I were listing it, I would have listed it for $55. Now I will probably wear it and then I'll list it for $35 or $40. This one was new with tags and I was not familiar with the brand. It looks like Vero Moda and often I really mispronounce brands but this one is a European size small. It gives the name of it, the style number and everything. I'll list it for $22. That shirt sold overnight while I was sleeping. I woke up, saw that it had sold on eBay and I always panic. Oh my gosh, I've got to hurry and end it on the other platforms. I went to Poshmark couldn't find it. Then I realized, oh, I had it on Macari too. And I'd sent out an offer yesterday on Macari. So hurried and went to Macari, couldn't find it. And then I realized that it had been delisted by Vindu and that's why I didn't find either of them. And that was so nice. So it's working. My first item sold that I had on Vindu and it delisted on the other platform. So this is going to be so nice not to have to go find the items and end them. Then this is just a Forever 21 skirt, but sometimes Forever 21 can sell. I kind of thought that I might like 
I might like it or one of my daughters might like it. So I went ahead and picked it up. It is a size small and it is just this vegan leather or faux leather or pleather or whatever. Oh, I will try it on or I will see if one of my girls wants it. And if they don't, I'll just list it for like $14. Then a pair of Lane Bryant pants that are brand new with tags. They have a retail value of $59.95. They are a women's size 18 to 20. So I love selling that plus size. It looks a little bit like a animal print maybe. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more research, but they just looked really nice black color. I also think these would be really good at like holiday time. So I'll probably put some tags of like holiday, Christmas party, cocktail, things like that, because I think these would look nice with a really dressy shirt. I will list these for $24. This one I was not familiar, but it just kind of looked special. It had all of this embroidery and it was this long dress. And so I thought, I think that could be something special. I typed in the exact name on eBay and Poshmark and didn't find anything. So then I used Google Lens and just took a picture of this tag and it pulled up a dress that was almost identical to this one that had sold for $55. So I was really excited. So I think this one does have potential. I went ahead and started this one at $55 plus shipping and then we'll see. I'll, I'll adjust accordingly because I did find one that was similar, but that was just one. I didn't find 20 of them that had sold. So this one we will see. Then this was a really nice pair of pants. This is Kate Hill. They're 100% silk and they are a size petite medium. And I listed these for $25. Next, I've sold this brand before. I love finding vintage nightgowns at the bins. They sell so well. This one is Filmade, size 3233. It says 100% nylon. And just today, I sold a vintage robe on eBay that I had found at the bins. Lady and I messaged back and forth, and she was so nice, and she had a robe like that previously, and it had worn out, and so she was looking for a replacement. I love picking up things like this. Then another item that I thought would be perfect for holiday time, and I thought this was so precious. It feels like a, a linen type material, and then it has this red plaid, plaid trim and tie. It is Laura Ashley London, size four, and I believe I have this listed for like 14 or $15. Then I found a huge pile of Zara items altogether, and I really like selling Zara. There can be quite a range on solds on Zara, so I normally look it up, especially if I had a regular Goodwill store. But if shopping at the bins, I usually pick up almost all Zara. These are so cute. I wanted to keep them for myself, but they didn't look great on me. Here's the tag, and they are just this black pair of leggings with this zipper front with the little circle, and the side has an army green and white stripe, and they're stretchy, and I just thought these were really cute. I have them listed for... 14 for $14. Sometimes I can't remember if I have them listed or if Morgan has them listed because I help her with her so I'm forming the titles and I pick them up. So I might sometimes say I have it listed, but Morgan actually has it listed, but one of us does. Then this is a pair of Zara jeans. And after looking up sold comps, I think these are actually men's jeans. I was looking up the comps and I kept going back and forth whether they were men's or women's. They have these cargo pockets. They have this lettering on the sides. I have them listed for $25. And then a couple t-shirts, I'll go quickly. T-shirts, I have each of them listed for $19. And they are so soft. And this one has this pink glitter on it. This Zara t-shirt has this raised black velvet on it. I thought it was really cute and unique. Then these are Zara pants and they have a flap over the front and the back, so they appear as a dress, but they're actually pants, so I also put culottes on it, and they are a size medium, and they are nice and silky soft. Then this is a Zara cardigan. It is a size medium. It's this nice green. I actually took this with me when I went to Europe, and I wore this all around Rome one day, 
So, so this sweater is attached with some good memories, so I might keep it or I might go ahead and list it. If I list it, I'll just list it for about $12 or $14. Then a pair of Zara shorts, and they're just kind of basic black shorts. They have an elastic waist, and I or Morgan will probably list these for around $12. Then this little crop top that I have, is Zara. It says real energy, positive thoughts. And then down at the bottom, it says keep active. And it's just a, just a little crop top. I thought it was super cute, high waisted. I loved it. So I decided I would keep this. And I try to usually wear in all of my videos, something that I've thrifted or something from liquidation. And actually, actually not just in videos, in everyday life, I'm usually wearing something that I thrifted. Then this one, I saw it and I thought it was kind of unique with this tie-dye, but I felt like tie-dye was doing really well a year or two ago, but maybe not as much now. So I thought Wild Fox was doing great for a little while, but it's kind of trailed off for me also. And then I just sold something Wild Fox a couple days ago, but I looked up comps and they looked good. It's a size extra small. So I listed it for just $15. Had it been a large or an extra large, I probably would have listed it at $19 or $20. Then this one is a long sleeve pocket tee and it says Tulane University. I find that university shirts will often sell well. I wouldn't pick them up usually at a regular Goodwill, but at the bins, I, I can usually profit eight or $10 on something like this for a very low investment. Then I found this Michael Stars dress. It's a racer back roof sides i thought it was really cute and i usually have pretty good luck with michael star selling i have it listed for 22 dollars then i love this style of dress i should probably try it on and see if it fits me it would be hmm, i think it actually might fit me so i might have to try this on but i already have it listed it is arden b size medium and it has this nude color underneath with the lace overlay it's strapless and then it looks like it's a bit of an empire waist and i love this style of dress so i picked this up based on style and i have it listed for 22 dollars this is just an open cardigan from max studio size large lightweight nice pattern this one is jack and missy floral kimono and it's a one size fits most and I just thought that was pretty and things like this tend to sell well. I have it listed for $18. This one was so cute. This is Under Armour and it is a size large and it says U.S. Navy tradition on the front and the back is so cute. It crosses over in the back. And so I thought this was really nice and it's in excellent condition. It feels like it hasn't even been worn and I have it listed for $19. Then this is another thing that I will pick up all day long at the bins, but usually not at the regular Goodwill. This is Adidas and it's a youth size large and it's these black track pants with the stripes down the side and it's the snap away pants where it completely snaps down the side. Morgan has this one listed for $15. I enjoy selling anything golf related. I find that golf things normally sell well. This is Puma Golf. It's a women's size large, a nice sleeveless collared golf shirt. And I have this listed for $18. Then Victoria's Secret Pink is a great seller usually not for a lot of money but it's a pretty consistent seller for me and i love picking it up at the bins this is a crop top and it is a thermal type material it's a women's size large and it's oversized i think the chest measured like 50 inches it looks kind of gray kind of green i can't tell like it depending on the lighting sometimes it looks gray sometimes it looks green so i just put that in the listing then this one was one of the things that I picked up really quickly when the lady told me that I needed just a couple more items to get over 50 pounds. And I probably would not have picked it up because it's not in amazing condition. It is a quarter zip, size medium. It has the large 
pink logo on the back. If it was in really nice condition, I normally would pick that up, but it just looks a little bit worn. I just, I had Morgan put that in the listing and just price it really low. I think she listed it for like $12. And then same with this one, but it's so cute. It says messy bun and getting stuff done. It is a size medium and I thought this was so cute. Maybe I'll keep this one. This would be a cute shirt to wear when I'm like cleaning the house or doing laundry. It had a couple flaws on it. I think it had like a little spot, but you know, that's okay for a cleaning day. And Abercrombie and Fitch. I used Google Lens to look it up and the stock photos are so cute of this shirt. Abercrombie and Fitch, size large. It's off the shoulder and a little bit of a crinkle. It's, I love the colors. If it was my size, I definitely would keep it. And I have this listed for $22. Then these are really cute. They're Abercrombie and Fitch sweatpants and they have like the elastic bottom. They're kind of joggers, but these kind of remind me of like what sweatpants were like when I was in high school with this elastic at the cuff. So I might see if one of my girls want these, but the comp surprised me. They were actually really good. I think Morgan or Sydney might want these, but if I do list them, I'll list them for $22. Then this one, I'm keeping just a Nike jacket, full zip, it has this wide waistband at the bottom, so I wear stuff like this all the time, so I will keep it if I were to list it or if I wear it and then decide to list it later, I'll probably list it around $15 to $18. Same with this one. I like it. I might keep it. It's a J. Crew sweatshirt with a little pocket. Here is the tag. If I list it, probably $15 to $18 then I avoid a lot of button downs because I don't like steaming and ironing them. And a lot of them have a low sell through rate. So you just have to price them low to get them to sell. And this one looked like I could make at least a $10 profit on. And so I went ahead and picked it up. J. Crew summer plaid shirt, slim fit, size medium. So I just thought that was a nice looking shirt. So I went ahead and picked it up. Then this one is Ann Taylor Factory and it is a linen blend. So I picked it up because I thought it was really cute. I have pretty decent luck with Ann Taylor, even if it's factory. If I get it from the bins, it's very low cost. This was lightweight. Either Morgan and I will list this for probably like 15 or $16. Then normally I am not picking up colored jeans anymore, but these were Talbots. I've been loving Talbots. They felt so nice, like they were brand new. They are size 12. They say flawless and girlfriend. So I decided I would go ahead and pick them up and I might just list them for about $15. So I thought I would give them a try. Just a quick reminder, if you're new and not subscribed, I'd love to have you back. Just hit the subscribe button down below. And if you hit the notification bell, it will let you know when I release new videos. Then my daughter Sydney said, if you find any Levi's cutoff shorts, pick them up. So I found this pair. These are Denizen by Levi's, but I don't think they will fit her. So I will go ahead and list them. They are a size eight or waist 29. So I'll list these for probably 12 to $15. These, I was surprised the comps look pretty decent on them. Victoria's Secret polka dot pajama shorts. And I'll list these for 10 or $12. I picked up a couple bras. This one had pretty good sold comps and it's a good size. It is a 44 double D. So that makes a big difference on sizing on selling bras and I'm not sure how to pronounce it. So I'll just put the label right there. And I have this listed for $18. And I picked up this bra because it was a good size. 38 double D it looked in great condition, but the comps just didn't look very good. If I decide to list it, I probably would only make like four or $5. So I might just choose to donate it instead. These jeans are Chico's black label size three, and they have their own sizing. So they are a plus size, but there's a little bit of pulling right here. And often they will still sell, but just not for as much. So I think I could list these for like $12, $14 and they would still sell if I decide to. Then this is just a cute little bralette. 
and it is the brand Live Love Dream. The comps weren't great, so I might just keep it or give it to one of my daughters. And we're at the very end. These are kind of some of the items that I'm like, ah, were these a mistake? And sometimes I end up with some of those at the bins because I want to use my time picking things and I don't look up comps on really lightweight things. I think I'd rather just take the gamble than take the time and then I'll just redonate some of these. This I thought, Oh, this has the potential to be pretty good. It is a good size, size large, 10 to 12 to 14. It's the, that A-V-I-A, I'm not sure how you say that, Avia. But what I might do is I collect buckets of things. So these are all children's clothes. I have a bucket of two T items, four T items, five T items. And when I find cute things at the bins, it costs very low, then I'll put them in that bin. Then when I have a lot of them, I'll put them together as a big lot and maybe make 40 or $50 off of a group of really cute items that might only cost me five or $10. Oh, and I've been collecting some things for when New Year's is coming. I have a lot of athletic wear sell. So on some things like this, it might not sell well all by itself, but I'm collecting items in different sizes to put together a lot. And this one, same thing. I'll look these up and see if they will go individually or they might go in my buckets by sizes to create lots. This one is BCBG Girls, size 2T, and it's the cutest little romper and it's super soft. This one is Matilda Jane, and I thought it was adorable. I like Matilda Jane. I'm not sure yet if I'll sell it individually or in a lot, but it's a size four, so cute. Then this one is Emma and Ella, size 10, and just another cute little romper, so soft, and it has unicorns on it, so I would definitely use a keyword, unicorns, because I know when my kids were little, they, when they would love something, I would look up unicorns or butterflies or fire trucks or whatever they were really into. And then this was just a little Nike shirt, so it is a size small. So I will put this in a bucket to make a lot. I had one more thing that was still in the wash because it had been soaking in OxyClean. I do wash or steam or sometimes even dry clean any item that I get from the bins. And this one had a little spot, so I soaked it in OxyClean. It came right out, but I forgot to get it out of the dryer when I did the haul. It is another Zara item, and I used Google Lens to find the exact item, and I found out it was a men's shirt, and it says, carry out my plan on the front and it is a men's size small. So this was the last item in this haul. If we look at the numbers to see what this haul is worth, the listing value I estimate at $1,234. That is based on sold comps and prior experience. When everything is listed, it should be $1,234. Then I know I'm going to negotiate. I'll drop some prices. On average, I will sell for 20% less than my listing price, which means I will sell the items for $987.20. Then platform fees will be about 20% on average, taking that number down to $789.76. I have already received back in the bank $82.68. So that means my projected money back in the bank should be $872.44. Then we need to take out the cost of goods, which was $112.07. That leaves me with a final profit of $760.37. If I divide that by the total number of items, which was 67 items, that means on average I am making a profit of $11.35 per item, which I find is pretty typical for a bins haul. I really enjoyed visiting the Houston Goodwill bins, and in my mind, I thought I was going to find really high priced items. I thought it was going to be far above my normal bins hauls, but it was really pretty much the same as when I go to my local Goodwill bins in Oklahoma City. I'm very happy for that low cost of goods. I think that is a great return on investment. 
So that is everything from the Houston bins area. If you enjoy Goodwill bins hauls and wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it so much. And if you're new and not subscribed, I'd love to have you back. Just hit the subscribe button down below. And if you hit the notification bell, it will let you know when I release new videos. And when any of these sell, I will be sure and include them in my what sold videos. That way you'll know how much they actually sold for, how many days they took to sell and what my profit was. So thank you so much for watching and everybody have a great day. Bye.